you string theories in the audience and not the one in the panel. <laughs> 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 you want to say so, something? So, so let me say something here, right? You know, like, as you said, high energy, right? This is, yeah. is here, right? So the symmetry is very important in such a high energy physics, right? Symmetry, right? <laughs> symmetry. <laughs> how this, uh, yeah, you can see like like how this antenna system, bacterial growth, that's a, right? Yeah. The pub of bacteria. Yeah. That's a very symmetric. Very process. symmetric, yes. So that make any importance? Is that uh, necessarily like that? Or I I I don't know, but I, I know that when people just first discover that crystal structure, it's amazing, such kind of a ring like beautiful symmetric structure. So people propose various theories. So wheels are important for lab housing, for example. This was a title of a paper published at that time. But in my opinion, in the end, I think this regular uh, geometry is probably, probably just a kind of a residual of uh, evolution because if the pearl material are old, okay? So at that time, they can only build a very simple monomeric unit. Okay, and then it assembled into a very regular symmetric structure. So that's necessary because they don't evolve. At that time, they so don't. So nature learned how to break a symmetry. Yeah. And it evolves. Oh, okay. That's Maybe that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Initially, it has a good symmetry. Mm -hmm. Then that was broken. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you mentioned this molecule, right? Yeah. The chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Yes. Yeah. Chlorophyll has a very symmetric case. Yeah. But the but symmetric broken. case, your your transition is very high UV area. Yeah. Right? So that they break a symmetry. Yeah. So you can get the visible, visible yes. absorption. So the symmetry and symmetric blocking is very important too, right? In some sense. Okay. Well actually that's a good point. Yeah, for Q pen to have a significant transition, you, you need that, yeah. Uh, photosynthesis because it could solve the global warming problem and energy problem. No, no. Uh, to, to be honest, there are several, uh, many, not, not just several. In you come recent years, you see papers on artificial photosynthesis probably every week in various chemi chemical uh, journals. But the problem here is all those art so called artificial photosynthetic systems, they either build an electron transfer system that mimics the duration center. Or they build an uh, energy transfer system that mimic the you know, lighthouse system. They never actually build a whole complete system. But I think the typical pro problem here is, is how you couple energy transfer with electron transfer. And then has this electron go out, like I mentioned, the electron transfer chain, you need to build that. Otherwise, the electron transfer to the end, then you cannot generate any energy. You need to pick this electron for it, let it go somewhere to do work, okay? But that part is still missing. So I think it is still very far, far, far away. Can I follow up on this question? So what's the yield on the second part? The, I mean the, the Electron transfer is still very uh, efficient. That's actually almost one, <laughs> even better than that house thing. The but problem but when, when you start to have uh, this uh, synthesis part, because uh, yeah, that that is one percent. Yeah, <coughs> so biochemical part is very it is not as efficient. Yeah. Then so people ask, so the biochemical part is not as efficient. Then so why do you need this very efficient light reactions, right? <coughs> we say you only fit to the most low. It's governed by this low energy one. But the, the problem is this. If you have uh, the light reaction is in the beginning, in the very first stage. If you lose efficiency over there, then you already lost the energy. You cannot do any better. So you need to do better in the beginning. Secondly, sometimes the later part actually requires, although it's 1%, that's if it requires much higher efficiency in this um, kind of uh, 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 the light reaction. For example, in RCG in Barbie, you need four electrons to do to, to spray water, okay? So there's actually an RCG in Barbie center that goes through 
four states to accumulate energy. And there, there's a certain kind of a limited lifetime for that. Look, all those states are high energy states. They, they are limited lifetimes, okay, in the microsecond time scale. So you need to actually supply energy use in a, a certain, more than a certain frequency to maintain that state. Otherwise, you pump it to second state, goes back, then you pump it again. You are not going to do as you value. Okay. So another thing is that uh, how does this affect uh, this uh, photovoltaic uh, like, uh, energy generation? Right? You only use solar energy to uh, generate the current. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, I think that's still at, at the very early stage. Yeah, we still have much to learn. Yeah, another problem is you have to sustain the system, bio system. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not a semiconductor, so yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's another problem. Well, actually, there's lots of amazing things in photosynthesis that I didn't even have any time to mention. Yeah. In normal light condition outside uh, in plants, the problem is not to transfer energy to the radiation center efficiently. No, because light energy, it, the sun supplies too much light, too much excitation. The problem is to get rid of the energy without harm, okay? So at low light condition, so even in at moonlight, trees can do photosynthesis. That's good enough for that, actually. Even lights? Huh? In the city lights? Low yeah, lights. city lights, yes, yes, yes. But in sun, in sunlight at, at noon, they actually need to dissipate energy. So they actually evolve a very complicated mechanism to do so-called photoprotection, protect from excitation. And the RCG environment center, because it's so sensitive, so fragile, actually, okay? The reaction center of a PS2 that I mentioned there, it basically at a normal noon sunlight condition, it breaks, it breaks down uh, in 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, there is a huge machinery goes to this reaction center, pour out D1, D2, and uh, insert a new D1, D2 into a system. So RCG evolving trees, they use so much energy to, to produce RCG. And some people don't, don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. If you want to say something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speak up. So, so is there some kind of uh, so 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 I guess the difficulty sounds to me that is uh, how to write down a, a Lagrangian, well, a Hamiltonian, right, to describe the evolution, right? So those symmetries <laughs> are naturally well additional constraint on, but additional constraint on the the, the, the Hamiltonian you are. Yeah. But one question about this is that uh, what's the typical kind of coherent lens or like uh, basically do 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 you know do you actually need to care about those underlying structure or not, or if the interaction lens is greatly seeding the the, I think the, the, you, you, you really need to take, take, um, you know, care about the structure, and the structure determines the coherence length. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, that's an interesting question. How to write down Hamiltonian for the Yeah, I know. <laughs> but but that, uh, that's really major, too. Right, yeah, survival for fitness. Because ultimately, if you can do a Hamiltonian, then right. at least you have a chance putting on a computer and do some minimization. Yeah. Like variational principle kind of approach to work out. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, that's why he, yeah. he done this, uh, compares a random, yeah, 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 randomly yeah. oriented system, right? So he found that the uh, right? higher system is quite high end, like yeah. I said, very uh, high efficiency M, but it's not the maximum random distribution. So that we have to understand that but how we can make physics out of this. Yeah. Because the usual case, just noise. Yeah. Okay. I guess there's also an issue that it's, a, it's really a strongly coupled, it's probably going to be a strongly coupled problem, right? So um, that generally all those perceptive calculations is going to kind of break down. Yeah, break down. Yeah. Uh, and, and another Maybe some kind of lapses. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. And, and another research in our group is actually try to identify or find different ways, a, a better way to do perturbation, to survive this uh, strong company is actually not a problem, it's an intermediate company. Okay. Yeah. All right, 
So, uh, I think Professor Kwong was also working on this. <laughs> so yeah, I need to close down this uh, very interesting seminar X, and but the discussion will be continue on to, over coffee at room A O two. You are welcome to join us. Uh, and one, let's thank the uh, the speaker and the other panel members again. Thank you very much. And in one month, there will be another seminar X on brain by Professor Jiang An from Tsinghua University. He has published quite a few uh, nature and science papers on the, uh, the brain structure of, uh, say, uh, flies, for example.